Greetings, everybody. I'm Lobo. Welcome to Luna. This is episode 154 of my Minecraft survival series. And today, well, we're going to make a quick detour over here at the approach before we head over to our actual work site over at Wolfen's Laboratory and the Quarantine District. Because uh, last episode, you might remember when we were over here working, when we were building up our neighborhood and doing, you know, all of this stuff right here, I mentioned that it might be a good idea for us to upgrade our manual tree farm over here, specifically the oak sections of it, possibly all the, uh, the single wide tree sections of it. Uh, so I think that's what we're going to go ahead and do to start off. Now, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this in the video, but basically what I intend to do is take each of these one by one sections and make it a two by two section where we can plant four trees instead of one. Now, this will reduce the amount of saplings we collect overall from our leaves compared to the number of trees that we have to harvest, but I don't think it's actually going to put us in the red as far as saplings go, but it will allow us to collect four times as much wood. Another thing we're going to do while we're here is go ahead and limit the height our oak trees can grow because when we get these gnarled huge oak trees in here, it takes forever to cut them down. So we're not going to deal with this anymore. So this is basically what the oak section of our tree farm is going to look like, which is cool because it looks like one big tree. It looks normal, so it's not going to look too out of place here. The question is, though, once we harvest this tree, will we get more than four saplings? Because that's what we're going to need in order to keep this thing going. All right, so we do have four saplings, and we're not even done getting rid of the rest of these leaves yet. Look, there's another one right there, another one right there. We are, uh, we're good. We got our investment back and then some. We about doubled our investment, in fact, so not going to be any problems. Last thing we really need to take care of is making sure all these saplings have adequate light to grow into trees. And I think we're just going to do something like this where we put torches next to each of the saplings. That way, once, you know, a tree grows, it's not going to block the light from any of the other saplings surrounding it, right? Now, as far as the birch and acacia sections of this, the other trees I would like to see increase harvest from, I think what we're going to do, since we can't just plant them all next to each other because they won't grow that way, we're just going to add additional planters in each of the rows where these trees are located on. And I think that should be that should be good for us for now, at least until we get a, a good automatic tree farm going again in this world. Ah, but it has come to my attention that uh, with the acacia, at least from time to time, some of these are going to grow in a bit wonky and prevent their friends from actually being able to sprout up. So worst case scenario, we end up with the same amount of acacia that we had, but in all likelihood, we'll end up with at least a little bit extra. But, uh, you know, since we're doing this to the birch, I would like to continue the theme and just just have this be pretty cohesive. And that, I think, should do it for us for now, at least, uh, as far as, you know, maintaining wood. As far as the two by two trees go, the big ones back there, not too worried about those. Those give us plenty of wood for each harvest. So I think pretty much the oak, the birch and the acacia were all we really needed to take care of today. I am going to go ahead and leave this area loaded in so that way all these trees do get a chance to grow in and we can make sure that it's actually going to work for us without bone meal. Uh, so I'll go ahead and bring Watchdog or Wolford over here. They can keep an eye on this place for the time being. But as I said, this is not today's project. This is just something we we're doing to get warmed up just starting off. What we're actually going to be doing today is over here at Wolfen's Laboratory in the Quarantine District. You know what I just realized? I left all my supplies in my basement. <laughs> so uh, let me go ahead and make a U-turn. I'll meet you over there in a few minutes and we'll discuss. Uh-oh. <laughs> Looks like we're having some chunk loading issues. Also, super powered rockets. I'm not a fan. Okay, thank goodness that's over. Wow. Anyway, we are returning to uh, the quarantine district to continue work on a project we started a couple episodes back, our uh, rocket production facility. Now, we already got our creeper farm in here to produce some gunpowder for us, but I was thinking, you know, it's a long walk from here at our at our ordnance production facility to to Dunder Minecraft, our paper supply company, to actually get the the paper to add to our gunpowder to build rockets, right? So I was thinking over here it might excuse me, Cal. I didn't know you were so attached to that torch. Uh oh. Looks like we might have some issues. <laughs> so I was thinking, what could be good? What could save us the walk? is uh, if we add a small sugarcane farm over here in this area to be used solely for rocket production. Can you go away, please? Can't concentrate when you guys are shooting crossbows at me. 
Now, since I already have a sugarcane farm and that sugarcane farm works and has worked in multiple editions of the game, we're going to stick with that for the time being. So I'm basically going to put in the same the same contraption that we have for sugarcane farming over at Dunder Minecraft. And we also need to figure out how this room is going to be designed around that, how that's going to be designed within the room. With the ultimate goal being at the end of this episode, we have the entire interior of this place that we walk through complete. And we want it to be a place our cats are going to enjoy. And speaking of our cats... We're not creeper farming right now, so there's no point in having them over there. We'll go ahead and bring the cats over here so that way we can get their opinions on what we should do with this place, how we should make this area fun for them and all that. So short-term goal, sugarcane farm and getting the layout of the room. And I think what we're going to do is go ahead, call Wolford on over here, put on a little bit of music and get to work. There it is. Welcome back, everybody. That is our first official harvest. And just to show you guys what we actually did back here, it's the same mechanism we used over at Dunder Minecraft. Cactus timer, uh, once that grows into its full height, send a signal up a torch tower to activate all those pistons, harvest all our sugarcane. Another thing you might notice is that we got a ceiling in there and it's the same ceiling design we used in here because we're going to be carrying some designs from this room over there, next up being the floor. Which means we'll need to grab some diorite and some uh, excuse me. <laughs> uh, hello. There we go. Wow, the lag is it? Ow, impressive. It's very impressive, in fact. Oh man, he just dropped everything. Anyway, uh, we're going to need some diorite and andesite half slabs because we want to make sure that this floor is completely non-spawnable for what should seem to be obvious reasons now. And uh. I don't know why that guy's in there because the entire floor of this place should actually be non-spawnable. Huh. Anyway, as I was saying, we're using half slabs here to make sure the floor is not spawnable because I do plan to keep this area fairly dark. Uh, despite the fact that, like, uh, we just had a creeper inside. I don't know, maybe he wandered in from outside. I have, I have no idea because, you know, I've gone through this place and I, I haven't seen anywhere that looks like he'd be able to spawn mobs. I don't know, maybe I'm missing something, but, uh... I'm just going to go ahead and assume he wandered in from the outside. Now, by the time I get the floor in, you should have a pretty good idea what the layout of this room is going to look like, because it's not just going to be flat. Like, we're going to have this center section raised up right here, so that way we can actually, you know, say hi to our cats, give them some treats and stuff like that, you know? Because uh, right now, I'm not able to do that. Too short. And if that's not a practical enough reason, like, uh, you know, raising the floor up over here, it's going to make sure this area just isn't too flat, that there's some elevation change and whatnot. It's also going to allow us to hide our redstone, which sends our minecarts off on their way, turns on our lights and all that mess. And that should take care of the floor inside our main room here in the ordnance production area. Uh, so basically, you know, we just wanted to transition easily enough from this area into this area while also setting this area apart just a little bit. We are going to continue this floor out through here because uh, this is going to be part of this build as well, except for a lot of this I'm thinking is going to be mostly exterior. Uh, you'll kind of see a little bit more what I'm talking about with that as we progress because it's got to transition from interior to exterior. But uh, yeah, let me let me just go ahead and continue with the floor for now and we'll talk about all that stuff in a little bit. Well, actually, let me go ahead and give you an idea of what I'm talking about. If it doesn't make sense, hopefully it will by the end of this episode. So this will be interior, right? The The creeper farm will be in an interior area, but it's going to be 
uh, kind of on a platform suspended over this area, which will be exterior and connected to the botanical analysis division. That way, from the botanical analysis division, where we're going to be growing all our plants and stuff, we can have access to our sugarcane area, which is in the ordnance production area. So all these areas are going to kind of intermingle a little bit is what I'm thinking. Uh, and in the future, that should help us, you know, travel this area a bit easier and collect what we need to collect without too much hassle. And I really wish I could explain the layout of this thing better than I can, but you know, words are hard sometimes. And uh, it's better that I just get kind of the layout in than I can show you and give you a better idea of what I'm talking about that way. So we are gonna have a second floor. It's not gonna be a full floor. It's gonna be mostly kind of a balcony that overlooks the main cat area. Something kind of like this. So you can see everything's starting to come together a little bit. But now that we have the floor in place, it's time to start thinking about the remainder of our walls. And as far as our walls go, we're just going to take the same design we used throughout the quarantine district hub and carry that on in here because it is, after all, part of the same build. And then once we actually have some blocks in place, I can actually go in and kind of, you know, more solidify the layout of this. Because while I do have a slight idea of what I'm going to do in these areas, it doesn't really start to come together for me until I start getting blocks in and I can see, you know, how everything is really supposed to look, right? So I know I'm kind of vague sometimes with my descriptions of how areas are supposed to look, what we're going to be doing, but that's because this is like an ever-changing process for me and getting more specific would just mean I'm, I'm wrong with what I'm telling you more often. For instance, now I just saw another change I want to make. We can actually, we have enough room here, I see now that we have enough room here to get a little stairway in, which means that we don't have to go to one of the interior stairways of the hub in order to get up to the top. We can just go to the balcony of this room from inside this room itself. So, I mean, obviously when I build, I don't have the whole build planned from the get-go. You know, I have a kind of a general idea of what I'm going to do. Then I like to take care of all the details in the moment, whatever feels right, you know? Not that there's anything wrong with having the entire build plan. That might be a better way to do it. It just comes down to like personal preference, really. Uh, you know, for me personally, like I have more fun when I get to, you know, that when I'm not building from a blueprint, when I'm, when I'm, you know, here actually actively designing, that kind of hurt. So used to having jump boost. I'm building without jump boost right now because we're just out of range over here in the corner of the quarantine district. So another change we're going to make is I was originally planning on having our balcony area, the roof of that be the same height as the quarantine hub, but now I'm thinking we go a bit bigger with it. I'm thinking we go ahead and make it the same size as the rest of our cat room. That way we can fit in some entertaining stuff for our cats. I'm thinking that might actually be a good area for like a cat tree or something. Because we want to keep our cats happy, right? And I'm assuming cats like cat trees because they make them. I've never actually seen a cat use one. I've always seen them just sitting in the corners of rooms, you know, the cat trees. But, I mean, this would fit within the boundaries that we've traced out for our room here. So we might as well utilize the space and hope that uh, our cats actually get some use out of it. But now that we have the rooms traced out, we know where the walls are going to be. We can go ahead and start getting those walls filled in using our standard Wolfen's Laboratory colors. And then the end of this room is going to be before we get to the walkway that leads over to our creeper splat zone over there. So that's going to be under some kind of covered area. I'm just not quite sure how I'm going to do all this quite yet. So we're just going to end the room itself right here and work on this for the time being uh, while I give some thought to it. And it's just now occurred to me that maybe I shouldn't have put the roofs on so soon or maybe I shouldn't be doing the walls just yet. Because once we get these things up, there's no windows, so we're not going to have too much light down there. It's going to be, I apologize if it ends up being dark for the rest of the video. I preemptively apologize for that, if that ends up being the case. Now you'll notice our walls down low are that cyan terracotta with a little stripe of lime at the top. But right now I'm making the majority of these walls with the lime terracotta. And that's because I don't want to work in both colors. I think that might be a little bit too busy with what we're going to have going on here because we're going to build a cat tree We're going to build some cat platforms some cat forms if you will and uh, I think uh, probably having a single color to the Walls going up is going to be to our benefit. You know, we don't want to have it look too too crazy in here and as far as this final wall goes, I did mention last time we were here, I wanted this to be a big old window. That way I can see the cats round the corner in their mine carts and take off towards the creeper farm, which also benefits us in this video as well, because we are actually going to have a window that lets light into this room. So we're not going to have to, you know, be building in total darkness and have to rely on my descriptions for you guys to know what's going on, because we both know 
that wouldn't go well. But that seals up our room and now we know where we can build, where we can't. And uh, as I said, we're gonna be making some uh, some interesting things for our cats to do in here because this is where they're gonna predominantly hang out. And I've talked to these guys, they want they want a cat tree, they want a cat house, they want some various cat forms around here. We're gonna go ahead and take care of all that for them. And let me also say, if I have time, I would love to get around to doing a little bit of work to the walkway leading out to the creepers platform as well, because I do consider that to be part of the interior of the ordnance production area, even though I mentioned it was going to be outside, it's going to be covered. You know, it's going to be covered. It's not going to be the actual exterior build. So I think, uh, I think it fits into the theme for this episode. <laughs> and also it would help us get set up for the actual exterior build, which we will get to eventually in that area. You know, that would, that would set us up pretty well for that. So now that we have a plan, I think at this point, what we'll go ahead and do is call Wolfred on over to the quarantine district, put on a little bit of music and get to work. Welcome back everybody and uh, that was fun that was a lot of fun like we not only got this interior done the interior to our cat room here we also got the walkway pretty much taken care of uh, which is good you know because that I don't know if I would have been able to do that while talking to you guys that required a fair amount of concentration but yeah the cats they got plenty of room to you know go and maneuver and find little things to play with they can jump from platform to platform they got their little cat house over here which they can go in and you know enjoy big enough for me too which is always good you know because I might want to come in here and play with them from time to time as well oh, ow or uh <laughs> watchdog watchdog would really enjoy it watchdog's got a real soft spot for cats which is kind of weird since he's a wolf or a dog or something but where did all these animals come from this place is getting over this is a cat room not a cow and sheep room <laughs> uh but yeah our walkway over here is uh you know you're not gonna be able to see the sunlight once we actually get this building enclosed because eventually this will be enclosed and it's going to be enclosed in such a manner that you know it's going to lead upward so it's going to be kind of a slanted build which should be pretty interesting looking you know i haven't really done anything like that in the past so i'm looking forward to kind of experimenting seeing what we can do to kind of you know enclose all this stuff right here into a single build that way it doesn't look so messy right but yeah, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with the way this turned out. And as I said, it's it's under a covered area, so I'm considering it part of the interior. And I would say this is the entire interior of the ordnance production area done. But before we end off this episode, let me go ahead and, and grab Watchdog, bring him over here to play with the kitty cats, because I know he, he'd love that. 
Oh, the weather has taken a turn for the worse. Look at that. We come over to Wolfen's laboratory. Everything goes sour all of a sudden. But that's okay. We're going to bring Watchdog over there to Kitty's and he can be happy. Hey, where's Watchdog? The guy that normally stands right here on top of this chest. I told him to keep an eye on you. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> the weather has really gone bad. No, seriously. Where is where is my friend? Where is Watchdog? Let's see what he has to say. I haven't the slightest idea who you're talking about. <laughs> what, what do you mean you don't know who I'm talking about? Like, I put him right next to you and told him to keep an eye on you. I wanted you to notice that he was there. Did this guy really not notice I placed Watchdog right next to him? He doesn't know who he is? All right, well, that's that's weird and also a big waste of my time. Uh, wonder where Watchdog could be off to. Maybe a bathroom break? Did he need to go for a walk or something? I mean, if so, he shouldn't have gone far. He's very dependable. Watchdog! Watchdog! When was the last time I saw him? Like, I know we had that, that production meeting at the end of last episode. And Wolfred brought us all refreshments. Oh my! Oh my. Wolfred brought us all refreshments. That's the last thing that I can really remember. Huh. I mean, that, that's weird. That's weird, but, you know, I'm sure Watchdog will turn up. I'm sure everything's fine. He's probably off somewhere doing some, you know, Watchdog thing. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I do think that is going to be it for us today. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please be sure to hit that little thumbs up button. Let me know if you want to see more. Please remember to subscribe. But, as always, I just want to thank you guys for hanging out today. I deeply appreciate it. And until next time, I'm Lobo, and I will see you guys later.